इंटरनेशनल बांग्ला टीवी शीघ्र ही आज थे Hello and welcome to Kalas Town Hall. I am Ziaul Kanim. Uh, we are uh, going to discuss about uh, Japan-Bangladesh trade relations and the road ahead. Uh, traditionally, Japan, we are enjoying with Japan a fantastic relationship, and the relationship not only uh, rich. And warm, but it goes back to uh, 19th century, even before that. We'll come back to that. But we have some special guests uh, joining today to discuss about the potentials of our relationships and and how the relationship can really go to the next level. We are joined by uh, tonight uh, His Excellency Itao Naoki, Ambassador of Japan to Bangladesh. We are joined by Rupali Choudhury, Managing Director, uh, Barger Paints, Bangladesh, and President of Foreign Investor Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FIKI, and Mr. Mahfuz Kobit, Research Director, Bangladesh Institute of International and Strategic Stat Studies, BISS. Welcome you all to the show. One thank of you very much for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's been an honor to have you on our show. Uh, one of the first countries to recognize Bangladesh in 1972 was Japan. And since then, Japan is, is a major development partner of Bangladesh. Uh, Japan has helped us tackling challenges in vital sectors, which includes education, health, water sanitation, agriculture, rural development, power and energy, and transport, and many others. Uh, and as of 2019, Bangladesh's ninth largest export market is Japan. Japan stands fourth after China, India, Singapore in terms of major exporting countries. We'll discuss and reflect on these areas and try to focus on how we can extend them economic ties, particularly business and investment relations, and of course, reflect on cultural relations with Japan. Uh, so let me begin with His Excellency Itao Naoki, uh, Ambassador of Japan to Bangladesh. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, let, let us reflect on the bigger picture of the relationship, the relationship that goes back to ages, where uh, even Ravindranath Tagore drew an inspiration from uh, Japanese poetry. Uh, our artists drew an inspiration from Japanese, the, the minimalistic uh, spirit, the Zen uh, philosophy of Japan. Uh, can you please reflect on the bigger picture of uh, Bangladesh-Japan ties. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Korim, to ask uh, a wonderful uh, question. Uh, you know, next year, the country is going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of its independence. And the following year, in 2022, 20, uh, Japan and Bangladesh uh, will uh, celebrate the 50th anniversary of uh, our diplomatic uh, relations. So I'm really hoping that uh, these two, two years will provide wonderful opportunities for us to bring uh, this partnership uh, to go to the next uh, stage. So at the moment, unfortunately, this pandemic is uh, uh, affecting uh, everywhere uh, in the world. But I'm sure that the uh, country will contain the situation soon 
and will uh, come back to the stage where we can have uh, normal uh, cultural relations, people to uh, people uh, contact. So next year and the year after, those two years will be a very, very important uh, years uh, for us to uh, develop our relations, uh, building upon uh, what uh, we have achieved uh, so far. Uh, you mentioned that Japan uh, is uh, uh, developing our partner for Bangladesh. So I'm so proud that Japan has been the, uh, what you say, the largest and the longest uh, development partner for Bangladesh. So now Bangladesh is becoming the model of the development. So behind that, uh, I'm sure that uh, what Japan contribute to your economy, your society, uh, played a role. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rupali Chaudhary, this is what I'd like to know from you. Uh, Japan's inflow of FDI remains quite low. Uh, and it doesn't even fall under the top 10 FDI originating, originating country uh, for Bangladesh, both in terms of flow and stock. Japan's investment, uh, this, the figures that I have, uh, investment in Bangladesh was US dollar 58.4 million in 2018, while it that was uh, in, in Myanmar, it was US dollar uh, 384 million. Uh, my question to you, despite all the potential that we have in the relationship, why we are not being able to take advantage and attract more FDI from Japan? What is holding us back? Um, um, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Um, I think... Uh, um, the figure, I mean, um, Japan tobacco, they have invested, you know, the Japan tobacco has uh, bought, and this is one of the largest. Um, Akit, you are referring uh, to Akit. Akit. Akit, yes. So it was like 1.5 billion as, I mean, maybe, you know, when the contract is over, the money is going to flow. So this is, this is one good start, I must say. Uh, as far as I am concerned, as a managing director of Berger Paints, uh, we could also beginning of this year, a sign up an agreement with uh, Chobuku Marine Paint uh, uh, Japan. And we are going to, uh, we have signed technical agreement and we are going to uh, manufacture international anti-fouling marine paint in Bangladesh. And, and this uh, a relationship is actually aimed at joint venture ultimately when there is a enough uh, production and marketing of the, and demand of the products, you know, we, we, which we will produce locally. So slowly, slowly, I think um, the individual company who are going to Japan, I mean, they can form joint venture and they have some kind of, you know, they need, you know, from our country, um, there is a um, feeling in among the Japanese investors that there is a diff gap between the practice and the policy. So on paper, our policy, um, policy looks very good, but there are some... Um, in, in absence of automation, there are some, you know, uh, indicator that is published in the international um, newspaper, like in terms of ease of doing business index, Bangladesh is not the, really high up, so below average. So, so those things actually uh, deter investors from coming to Bangladesh. So some mm -hmm. of the international parameters, if we do well, and if we can showcase that, you know, this is not that difficult, getting approval and taking money out in terms of dividend. So the things are pretty much normal. And we, the one biggest problem we had is the economic zone. Government has taken up um, economic zone and government has to build those, not only build those uh, economic zones, but also bring in um, enough FDI and show showcase uh, foreign investors up and running um, a, some in few economic zones. So there are public economic zones also. And we have seen that in public economic zones, some of the investors have already come from other countries. 
So if we can really show certain things, Japan is a long lasting um, um, friend for Bangladesh in terms of development. So in, in terms of investment, uh, why can't Japan be number one also in Bangladesh? That is our question. So like um, two, two wheelers market, you know, the, this is now local manufacturing has started in Bangladesh. So some of the Japanese company joint venture, they will start like Suzuki, like Honda, they will start, they have, they have started manufacturing in Bangladesh. And we are awaiting that, you know, so many reconditioned cars are being imported from Japan. And those could be also locally uh, produced in Bangladesh. So we would like that, you know, not really Bar Myanmar, but ba Bangladesh should be the first destination for Japan to manufacture uh, car, four wheel, etc. And on top of that, when Japanese investment come along with that, we feel that um, technology will also come and people will be also trained and there will be skill development in Bangladesh. Uh, I think. Uh, government has to has some role to play and private um, entrepreneur like us the way we have brought in japanese investment we also have to outreach them in japan to bring uh, more api in bangladesh mm -hmm. uh, my question to dr mahfuz kabir uh, the the import basket of japan is what 670 billion of which Bangladesh only covers 0.2%. And here is a huge, huge opportunity that lies where we can really can have a win-win situation with Japan. And there is an uh, 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 equation. If we can go up to 1%, and that will add USD 6 billion, to our export basket. Why we fail to basically uh, capture the export uh, market of Japan? Uh, Dr. Mahfuz okay. Kabir. Uh, thank, yes. thank you. As far as the latest data is concerned, if you see mm -hmm. both the import and the export, uh, uh, the export of uh, goods uh, was 1.37 billion in 2018-19 uh, uh, and in the 2019 and 20 it has gone down to 1.2 billion US dollars and uh, <coughs> but if you see the ratio so it, it's mm -hmm. growing and uh, in 2018 uh, and 19 it was 3.37 percent of the total export but in 2019 and 20 it became 3.57 that is 3.6 percent so it's, it's steadily growing. Despite the uh, global pa pandemic, uh, we are performing very well, and, and the, uh, the share of uh, Bangladesh export to Japan to total export is increasing. So that's a good sign. Even though import from uh, Japan has declined a little bit, from 3.8% mm. of 2017 it has become 3.5%. So that the deficit is not that significant. But if you see the kind of products that we export to Japan, so mm. it's a uh, more RMG, so it's 80%, more than 80%. But if you uh, consider home textile, so it's uh, again, I mean, more than uh, 84%. So there are some other products like uh, uh, articles of leather, 3.65%, uh, so foot oil. So foot oil is, is becoming a good kind of export item. So, and also furniture export. So it's, it's interesting to, to see that the other products uh, are also coming. So, uh, uh, so but Bangladesh is in the in the process of export diversification within RNG. So, a lot of new, in fact, uh, RNG products are coming within the basket. So, the I think the prospect is good. And you already mentioned about the uh, the ACJ. So, ACJ the new ACJ is coming. So, it's high hazard. So, already this. Uh, the agreement has been signed and in the next two three years a lot of investment will come so it's, it's we are expecting that more than 20 billion US dollar is coming and there will be a lot of new products like electrical and electronic products and then uh, in fact chemicals uh, and in fact metal and others so there will be diversification through uh, in fact investment uh, from Japan so even though now the investment is not that good but I think it, there is a big prospect so and Bangladesh uh, is going to receive a lot of investment from uh, Japan. 
in the private sector but in the public you will see the total investment so to in, in fact japan is trying to get in the in the broader picture of of infrastructure the energy sector like uh, uh, the transport and communication so if you see the whole thing so investment is not that bad so i i would say it's, it's good so and definitely and if you see the composition of of import items so it's industrial goods basically the the uh, machinery making mechanical appliances iron steel vehicles so these are them so it, it's a kind of win win situation so uh, uh, for us uh, if we if we uh, really in fact uh, capitalize this this kind of dynamics in in the uh, context of uh, uh, trade and investment so and and taking this together so there is a good pro prospect for us in the in the very recent uh, very in fact recent future so i think uh, so uh, the if, if the global pandemic the corona crisis uh, uh, in fact ends then it will be uh, getting a new dynamics mm -hmm. uh, your excellency uh, there has been a, a renewed interest in investing in bangladesh from uh, japanese companies and um, there are data shows that more than 5000 uh, Japanese companies are looking forward to invest in Bangladesh and there there is a lot of interest among uh, uh, Japanese investors um, as particularly uh, the way the uh, consumer market is expanding the way uh, our uh, GDP for the last uh, 15 years on a steady growth, we have clocked uh, eight plus GDP. So these are all very good indicator to attract uh, foreign investment. What are what is basically is uh, is uh, the psyche is the philosophy and also uh, the kind of interest you see in the investor Japanese investors. So what kind of queries they come with? No, I think what you said is uh, absolutely right in terms of the uh, reason why Japanese companies are so interested in this market. This uh, big uh, uh, consumption because of the size of the market, young population, very competitive uh, workforce, and also the, the government policies to uh, lay uh, good uh, investment climate, including the establishment of uh, uh, EPZs, SEZs, and high-tech uh, parks. Those are very, very promising uh, ways to uh, attract uh, investment. So if you look back, uh, compared to the number of countries, Japanese companies uh, in Bangladesh, so now we have 310 Japanese companies. So this number has been tripled uh, over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, even the volume of uh, export from here, Bangladesh to Japan, uh, value has been tripled. So uh, over the last 10 years, we have seen the steady uh, growth and development of uh, our bilateral economic uh, partnership. And uh, we talk about uh, trade of goods, but if you look at uh, trading uh, services, I think uh, uh, IT software export from Bangladesh is also something we should uh, more focus on. So there was a one recent example that was a company named uh, Data Soft Systems uh, Bangladesh, uh, which concluded contract with uh, Hitachi Air Conditioning System, and they will provide uh, uh, IoT application system to control heating and cooling of uh, air conditioner. So this is really a big contract. And uh, since you have a big reservoir of young, promising IT engineers, I think this service trade is also uh, something we will see uh, coming and uh, growing. Uh, Rupali talked about the importance of uh, ease of doing business. Uh, and both of the uh, panelists talked about the importance of uh, economic zones. I usually agree with what you said. And uh, as for these special economic zones, 
yes, uh, Japan and Japanese company will develop this Arai Hajal special economic zone in the very, very near future. So hopefully three to four years time, uh, this economic zone will be ready to uh, operate. Uh, recently, I visited the uh, executive chairman of uh, BEZA, Mr. Chaudhary, and uh, we agreed that we should make Arai Hazal the best economic zone in Asia. Japanese companies uh, came to Asia and made investment into those special economic zones of various countries. So that's the area and framework uh in which japanese companies made investment and with the presence of japanese investment there will be an enhanced volume and value of trade both ways so i think very much the success of alai hajal and uh mirishorai sez for that matter will be uh, crucial but in order for us to make alai hajal the best sez in asia we also need to look at investment climate in general. Yes, of course, SEZ will provide excellent uh, incentives. So I have no doubt that uh, in terms of the level of incentives, uh, this SEZ will be top class, including tax holiday and even exemption for uh, uh, import tax for some of the old machines and materials. But we really need to address and solve some of the issues even the existing companies are faced with in Bangladesh. We should address and resolve those issues so that those existing companies will feel more comfortable with the current climate. Then prospective companies will come, and then the Japanese company will form a new base of manufacturing as part of their effort to diversify supply chain, chains. You know, the the supply chain issue becomes very much important yes, under this uh, pandemic uh, situation. Yeah. So I have been raising some of those uh, specific uh, issues with my interlocutors uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, they will uh, be aware of the importance of addressing and resolving those issues. Those issues including, uh, include, uh, uh, you know, this customs clearance time, taxation issue, remittance issue and so forth but if i may take one or two examples mm -hmm. uh, i often talk about uh, uh, this uh, eligibility of cash incentives of mm -hmm. uh, rng import to export to new market mm -hmm. so you have this uh, four percent cash incentive mechanism in mm -hmm. exporting rng to new market so mm -hmm. new market is of course outside the us and outside europe including Japan, Korea, and other places in Asia. In uh, fact, I'm going to going to that direction. I'll be asking the next question is on that. The 52% okay, uh, of Asia's trade. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, the Bangladesh's export to Asia is only 14% of our total export. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a question for uh, Rupali Choudhury, uh, but uh, the statistic data shows the 52% of Asia's trade is basically intra-regional. Uh, are we missing the point that we should be focusing more on the Asian intra-regional trade uh, and not only focus on uh, North American uh, or European market? What's your take on this? I think all uh, business people, entrepreneurs are pragmatic. Uh, definitely, they are going to look for business opportunities in Asian countries. But we have we have to see that you know we are competitive in the you know in that particular market we, when we export from Bangladesh. Um, we have to see that whether any special treatment is given by American or European market, whereas you know we in the Asian market we are getting an extra. Uh, facilities or not in the export market we are talking about mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. basically the business people will the importance will be interested if they see that you know uh, importing from bangladesh will be attractive for them so you know business people will always look for business opportunity in terms of competitiveness 
so we have to benchmark ourselves with with other countries where the those countries are importing from buying from so if we see that you know they are those countries are getting uh, at a little lesser price then we have to understand why our prices are higher and i have often seen that you know basically we, when we see um in terms of exporting to even in a neighboring country our our material cost is sometimes high because when we bring in materials because bangladesh does not produce any any chemicals for that matter for any any raw materials for that matter we have to import all so we our our tariff structure it is you know from three tier is from 5 5% to 12% so we have to be competitive so in case of in, in case of export we get a raw material at the zero um, tariff value but the problem is you know someone is doing both export and domestic market it become very difficult uh, to actually make the customs people understand that you know this is for the export this is for the domestic market because we have seen that i cannot also talk about this in terms of competitiveness in in terms of complaining to the regulatory bodies because lot of people also take advantage of the duty benefit so we have to see how actually we can a same company look, uh, serving domestic market same company is actually uh, also looking at the export market and get the synergy of both the both the situation and we can be transparent and and also the situation can be uh, the regulatory body can also develop a system where uh, this kind of things can be traceable and we become competitive in those market so mm. i think if we go by do, do, do you market have product, product, do, product, do, product. do you have any specific recommendations to create a level playing field uh, as opposed to exporting and also uh, taking care of the uh, local market um the currently you know basically um, you have bonded warehouse facilities if you have the only you know export but now the government because some of the uh, some of some of the um, exporter they have uh, not utilized properly the bonded warehouse facility that has been stopped so ultimately if we have the bonded warehouse facility you can we can always you know become competitive in terms of um, exporting but if we use that bonded as a facility and utilize that you know product and services in the domestic market that is a wrong doing so ultimately our materials must be brought, must be able to brought in um, at a at a zero tariff and also as as the ambassador his excellency said the whether we know we can that any other than the garments industry also all other exporting um, sector should get that kind of 4% um, um, cash incentive facility so that we can become competitive in that market the problem is no we are unable to maybe compete in that market that's why we are unable to uh, go to this those countries mm -hmm. so uh, sector, Dr. By sector, mm -hmm. sector by sector mm -hmm. we have to see where where in which area we are becoming un, not competitive mm -hmm. uh, dr mahfuz kabir we have long been uh, a sort of insular economy uh, with uh, very little exposure to the global value chain uh, now that we are connecting exposed to international business more and more do you think we need to overhaul uh, the policy that that basically bind us as uh, as corporates as manufacturing uh, 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 industry so what are the basically uh, uh, policy uh, rec recommendations you think or changes that you think that is important for us to be competitive in the global value chain uh, thank you uh, uh, so uh, it's it's the age of value chain you see the the kind of uh, in fact trade of bangladesh so asia is basically the upstream of, of bangladesh value chain and the europe and north america is the downstream so uh, but if you see the the whole value structure then bangladesh is not being able to in fact uh, in fact uh, become a, as an important in, in terms of adding local value so even though rng in the rng you can see uh, the local uh, content so uh, in terms of intermediate goods and, and in fact uh, 
in some of the cases but if you see the broad picture the whole in fact uh, basket of of goods and services then uh, bangladesh has to go a long way so and and in, in terms of the market access if you see the the penetration of the in fact global buyers so the buyers the key role and and in fact in, in terms of product designing and and understanding that the, the data dynamics and being out of the it is the whole global market they definitely bangladesh has has a long way to go so and in in the context of local content development so the the government has to play a big role so to to support the entrepreneurs so that is very important so and and definitely there is a need for in fact developing the institution and linkage between the institution and the and and the private sector the exporters so that is very important so in 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 the in the case of design so design is very important uh, and and in that case so we don't we could not be able to in fact develop that kind of designer so even though we have the in fact entrepreneurs so they are quite ambitious but uh, in, in the case, uh, case of in fact uh, the market access so and in, in fact so there is still a long way to go so in in that case i think the government has to play as at a catalyst as as, as a promoter to a developing institution and and uh, definitely Definitely, we we need to provide the the in fact support maybe in terms of cash, but at the same time uh, promoting uh, through in fact in fact leveraging the different policies. So that is the thing. So I think the government has to understand that we have to face a stiff competition with the other countries like uh, India, Pakistan, and many other South Asian countries after 2024. So we are graduating from the LDCs. So now we are uh, in fact. Uh, getting the facilities in the european market in, in the csp and definitely also in the japanese market so japan is also providing us the effective self tariff uh, facilities so that will in fact go so we have to prepare uh, uh, ourselves uh, for the next level of competition and and bangladesh has to uh, in fact definitely has to survive so uh, and in that case i think there is a need for comprehensive understanding and and in fact in fact uh, the uh, need for uh, undertaking policies uh, uh, definitely bangladesh ministry of commerce and ministry of industry they have to in fact take lead but the uh, the entrepreneurs the private sector also has to raise the issue uh, okay. I thank you I, yes please you would like I, to i just i just want to say one thing in addition to what you said when we will try to export to japan or countries like that they would like to see the quality verifications you know so we need and we need uh, institutions you know that institutions must be international quality institutions so that that yeah. certificate from that institution will carry a value so japanese company when they see that you know these are certified by these institutions if if it is a bsti and also any any laboratory um, pertaining to that kind of industry so we need also an institution build up uh, for a, for us to uh, export to uh, different countries and different product portfolio and the export promotion bureau must also work with in tandem with bida so which actually suppose uh, in our country since bgme has a larger cloud they can go to the government and get all the incentive they want but other industries they are in the infant stage so in the infant stage we need more facilities from the government but nobody in the the kind of speed we want from the private sector and that has to be in sync with the um, government export promotion bureau the way they work and they also actually when we go there it things must also move very fast and automation is also required in terms of different departments like nbr like the ministry of commerce ministry of industries what bida is trying to do it has to go much deeper mm -hmm. uh Your Excellency, uh, Rupali Chaudhary has just said that a uh, very important issue that standard standardization is very important in case of uh, uh, be a be an agent of the global value chain. Uh, what are your thoughts, or whether you are thinking about helping Bangladesh to set up an institution to standardize uh, uh, Bangladeshi export? I don't. 
Yeah, the Japanese corporation has been very much uh, focused on infrastructure building at the moment. Uh, but uh, with the uh, success of this corporation, we are going to see uh, better uh, infrastructure uh, connecting people's life here. So particularly now Japan has been working on this Dhaka MRT, uh, this airport terminal, the international airport of Dhaka, and we are doing Matabari deep seaport construction and so forth. So in four to five years time, I think uh, the scene of infrastructure here will change drastically. But in parallel to that, uh, I'm of the view that uh, Japan needs to expand more the areas of cooperation, uh, including uh, skills education, technical education, uh, trying to nurture uh, workforce uh, under very competitive, uh, with very competitive skills and capabilities. And one of the issues uh, uh, is, I guess, uh, this uh, quality control of production uh, here. So for the quality control of the production, you need to uh, develop the skills of those employed, as well as the technology and how to meet the requirement of standard. So I think this is uh, also the area uh, Japan could uh, uh, widen the areas of cooperation. One good example is, uh, this is about the PPE, the personal protection equipment, the domestic production. So one of your companies began producing PPE with the expertise of the Japanese garment inspection company. So behind mm -hmm. that, there was a cooperation of WHO, USAID, JICA, uh, Minister of Health and others. So all provided technical uh, expertise to meet the requirement, to set the requirement. But in the production phase, it was Japanese inspection company on garment who helped the, to meet the criteria. So I think this is another way of collaboration uh, between uh, Japanese companies and Bangladesh companies to enhance the quality of production here in this country. So if I may talk about uh, uh, one uh, point, which is uh, important for, for bringing in Bangladesh into uh, regional and international supply chain. Uh, I think there is a role of uh, free trade agreement so Bangladesh has been working on concluding free trade agreement uh, with countries in South Asia, as well as uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, but in order for the economy to be integrated more in the region, I would really encourage uh, the Bangladesh to accelerate the pace of consultation so that the country will be able to have a large number of sets of FTAs with neighboring countries and beyond. So if you talk about the FTAs, so sometimes you conclude a, a comprehensive economic agreement. Uh, the agreement could include a standard issue, a customs issue, on top of the market access of uh, trading goods and trading services, intellectual property and so forth. This would really, I think, uh, help improve the competitiveness of the economy here and also uh, to learn how the companies can be incorporated into supply chain of the trading partners, uh, particularly uh, in ASEAN uh, countries. So it, it's really good to have uh, FTAs with South Asian countries in order to enhance the two-way trade, but for the economy to be integrated into ASEAN supply chain or and beyond towards the East, I would really encourage uh, uh, country to be more uh, keener uh, to do FTA. Uh, we haven't started our consultation, Japan, Bangladesh, FTAs, but uh, as uh, Dr. Mahfouz told about, uh, because you are uh, going to graduate from uh, LDC status in 2024. So beyond that, what sort of uh, arrangement we can make? So that is something uh, we should need to talk, we should need to consult with through our bilateral or channel. I'm sure that if you have FTAs with Japan and other countries in East Asia, that will be very, very beneficial for Bangladesh economy to grow, Bangladesh to be, become more export-oriented economy beyond 2024.
Uh, Rupali Chaudhary, uh, if uh, if uh, you're asked to identify three areas where we can really improve, uh, basically to create the environment to attract more FDI uh, from Japan and from other countries, what would be your suggestion, recommendation uh, on that? Um, I will echo with Honorable... Um, uh, uh, our uh, ambassador but what i'm trying to say is basically we need actually um, in terms of physical infrastructure takes time but uh, other than the physical infrastructure infrastructure in terms of law and it, it can move very fast so we need actually um, in order to get the business opportunity we must you know our our us and the regulatory body we must speed up the whole thing there should not be any bureaucratic red tapeism and, and there must be a constant dialogue with, with us and the regulatory body so that any changes required to enter any, any market like Japan or any other market in this Asian country. So if it is a free trade agreement, then whether we get the free trade agreement at a faster date and what happens after 2024, that is also important. Another thing is basically we would like to get, you know, incentive. That is the 4% incentive given to only garments. We should, it should, also, other portfolios of the business, it should be uh, also um, uh, given. And also, on top of that, that I, I think um, we, if we want to uh, include, if, if we want to be included in the global supply chain, the, our port facility, our custom thing, then it, we, it should be on the basis of the paper. So there should not be any discretionary power given to any any customs authority, you know, to exercise so that the things get delayed. So I think that you know basically what we are talking about, in terms of uh, in terms of paperwork, we should be super fast, and so that our you do not enter into any kind of delays anywhere, because physical infrastructure in any case government is taken care of, and hopefully in three to four five years time our um, all the infrastructural um, hindrances will ease up, but if we do not really address this kind of problem, that at the customs there are some issues. At the court level, there are some issues. So we have to actually, uh, and also at the at the different kind of level, we some we face some issues, and we need to also uh, establish that there is no gap between policy and the practice. Whatever is written on the paper, and there must be that there must be uh, that must be also in the practice, and also ease of doing business. So we have to understand where we are falling behind, and we must actually get the uh, rating up. So that people in outside Bangladesh, they can see that, you know, doing business here in Bangladesh is not going to be that problematic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also in terms of political scenario, what we are trying to say, uh, we say that entrepreneurs are pragmatic. So we, they would like to see the consistency of the policy in the long term also. If it is a tax policy, uh, whether, you know, it's going to be the same for the next five years or next 10 years. So that kind of, you know, um, commitment from the government is required. And we must also establish that with that commitment is going to be there if there is an also change in the political system. Mm -hmm. uh, Rupali why uh, we haven't seen any consistency in policy? What is basically uh, uh, is the problem that we don't see the consistency in the policy that will create the uh, environment, the ecosystem to, to Bangladesh to grow and move forward to the next level? Um, um, if I really honestly say that, you know, basically we have been growing at the rate of 8%, uh, 7%, then previous decade, 6%. So every decade we gain one percentage point in terms of GDP, GDP growth. So 5%, the next, next decade is 6%, then 7 then 8 But if you see that the, the target for the, for achieving the revenue, it is always, you know, hovering around 30%, 34%. So keeping the same net, uh, you know, of the taxpayers in terms of VAT, in terms of corporate tax, in terms of also custom duty, the companies are not growing at the rate of, you know, uh, more than maybe companies are growing multiple of the GDP. Like, you know, if it is GDP is 8%, the company will grow. If there are two, two times the GDP growth, maybe 16%. But normally companies grow uh, at eight, 10 to 12 percent that's the average growth so but if you have the national um 
national exchequer growth as 30 percent where it where it is going to come from so there are a lot of lot of these uh, disallowed expenditure which results in the higher corporate tax if you see our corporate tax in the private sector now this year it is it has been coming down from 35 to 32.5 but if you really really look at the south asian country it is not it will, they are trying to build around 20 percent so in terms mm. of corporate tax also we are on the higher side so mm. um that is also one impediment so ultimately let's see uh, what we are talking about is basically if the nbr from the government side if they set themselves a high target then they cannot achieve if they do not increase the net of the taxpayers um a tax number of taxpayers so existing uh, they want to easy way out they want to get that revenue from the existing taxpayers what they do they actually disallow some of the expenditure so that they go close to the target they have been uh, they have been given um so i think we government has to see what who, what are the companies actually who are supposed to uh, give the taxes and if they cannot give why they cannot give if the tax rate is high is that the reason they are not giving and if the vat rate is uh, high whether we can have different kind of vat rates for the different kind of industries we have to see and also see the competitiveness of of our economy with other countries sometimes we think that we have been growing so actually the companies also grow but the company does not grow uh, to that extent uh, so this is a serious problem um, and that is why all the problems stems from that uh, targeting higher um, revenue income from the business houses mm -hmm. thank you in terms uh, of income to in sorry income to income taxes also our base tax gdp ratio is also very low so mm -hmm. that will also we need, we need to improve tax gdp ratio so the, mm -hmm. the, uh, in any case we have to increase the net mm -hmm. uh, your excellency uh, uh, possibly we are living uh, uh, the best time for japanese investment in the sense that uh, the manufacturing share of uh, our gdp has rose from 16% to 22% uh, between two 2007 and 17 and also the per capita uh, income of bangladeshis are approaching 2000 uh, dollars and the, the economists uh, are of the opinion that when GDP per capita exceeds uh, $2,000, people start investing in durable goods. So for, 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 for Japan, who is big in uh, durable, durable goods, uh, is this the best time to uh, invest in Bangladesh for Japan? I think what you're saying is that Bangladesh is uh, going to be a very, very competitive uh, market not only Japanese companies, but also Korean companies, Chinese companies, or Indian companies, those are going to be vie with each other to uh, get the higher share uh, in this lucrative market. So, but I think what you said is absolutely right. Because of that, the companies are looking at uh, this market uh, as a new frontier of uh, investment. And the Japanese company's number is now 310. But according to Jetro survey, 70% of them uh, said that they are ready to expand business here in Bangladesh in the very, very near future. So uh, I'm really optimistic about uh, partnership uh, development between the two uh, countries. Uh, but uh, I would say that uh, uh, there will, should be a business friendly environment particularly foreign business friendly environment i talked about uh, this cash incentive thing but my point was this cash incentive was not given to type a company which is 100 percent foreign owned that means if uh, rmg company of uh, japanese 100 percent owned uh, wants to export rmg to japan they are not eligible for this cash incentives so I don't really believe that this policy makes sense. I wouldn't say this is discriminatory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, this is not really a purpose-designed policy. So Japanese companies make investment here mainly to do trade with Japan, but those companies are not eligible for cash incentives. 
when they export RMH to Japan. So I think this kind of uh, uh, inconsistency of the policy objective and policy implementation uh, needs to be uh, redressed. Uh, I think that's the point I wanted to make to take the example of a, a cash uh, incentive. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mahfouz, uh, uh, there is a vibe among uh, the uh, foreign investors that, and particularly Japanese investors, private investors, that uh, in banking sector, uh, the requirement of opening LC is a major barrier. Uh, overseas remittance is regulated. Uh, another fact, uh, factor is the long-term loans for overseas, uh, from overseas, and that, that is also regulated, uh, particularly for working capital. Uh, so what are the major changes, policy changes from the banking sector, you think, that will encourage private investment from Japan? Uh, it's a very good question. So I think the banking sector is, is going to uh, be transformative in, in the next couple of years. I mean, the, the situation is is changing, but it's uh, very slowly. So that is a big uh, concern Even in the case of interest rates. So it, it is going down and it's become uh, becoming investor friendly, but still it has a long way to go. There are a lot of problems in terms of LC opening and, and execution of the, of the LC. So the, and, and there are a lot of, in fact, uh, complaints uh, from the uh, different perspectives. So that is a big thing that uh, the uh, banking sector uh, has to do. And with the in fact, proactive in fact, support of, of, of the government, the Bangladesh bank has to realize that Bangladesh uh, has to, in fact, sustain based on the business, the international trade. So, uh, and the trade related uh, problems in, in the financial market. So that has to be addressed uh, with, the, with the, in fact, priority. So that is very important thing. And you have uh, rightly mentioned about the long-term loan. So uh, currently there is a lack of competition, I would say, because the, the whole, the banking sector, the domestic banking sector, even though we have some internet, in, in fact, foreign banks, but I think there is a there should be a kind of competitive environment within the financial sector so that they, uh, they in fact the bank the, in the financial sector uh, in fact can attract the, the businesses the international businesses which is in fact related to the uh, the trade in fact the export market so that has to be understood and uh, definitely that the monetary policy even though if you see the 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 recently in particular monetary policy a lot of in fact facilities have been given but uh, i think the investors need more in fact so since the lot of in fact dynamics is going on so that is very much required so and and i would uh, in fact add some of the things that uh, the honorable excellency has has mentioned it's regarding the uh, compliance issue i think and and the standard if you see the in fact in fact the standard institutions we only have the sarso so the south asian regional standard uh, organization so and we very much appreciate that there are instances in which japan has extended in, in uh, its support but i think we need to have a, a, a kind of big in fact uh, uh, support from uh, countries like japan in, in terms of improving the standards so in order to achieve the global standards so that is in fact a must so we have to get this and very important thing that ha has been said by uh, uh, Mr. Chodri. So we have to have a policy in fact regulation, I would say. And and uh, one thing that that really we, we need to work on, which is one stop service. Even though uh, in the in the papers we have, but uh, we recently introduced, but it's it's implementation is far away away. So we have to have uh, uh, really in fact uh, in real sense one stop service. So that the investors, the global investors, uh, are interested to come and invest, and and definitely we have another major challenge, which is IPR. So uh, when we graduate, then definitely we have to comply the, with the intellectual property rights. So that is really going to be a big challenge for us, and we we are in fact lagging behind in, in, in this context. And definitely Japan can can be a good support. And one thing very important, I I would say from from Japan. 
so it's it's uh, and the excellency has rightly pointed out it's, it's regarding the fta bangladesh is interested bangladesh has in fact uh, tried to do but one thing we have to keep in mind we should not be in in a, a kind of uh, fta with the countries who are in fact competitors of, of bangladesh but if you consider the case of japan definitely japan is not a competitor in terms of uh, in fact uh, trade so from japan we are importing the capital machineries and, and in fact the high end goods but from bangladesh the bangladesh is exporting the mostly rng so and if we in fact come into a, an fta with japan that would be a good thing i would say so bangladesh has to in fact consider of of uh, in fta with japan Mm -hmm. Excellency, uh, we have spoken about the uh, bureaucratic hassles uh, and the difficulty uh, and the ease of doing business, all these issues. But there are other issues, what I would say the cultural gap issue, the cultural uh, gap in business practices between Japan and Bangladesh. Uh, how do you uh, look at this issue and how, what from your end is you are planning to do to uh, basically bridge the gap of the cultural gap between business practices, particularly uh, if there are uh, communications, face-to-face uh, -face contacts, and there are uh, high-level uh, uh, Japanese investors, board members coming to Bangladesh, there, if they really uh, explore the country, uh, see uh, the, the potential um, in their own eyes, experiences personally, and I think that the perception will definitely change. So what are your thoughts on changing the uh, the cultural gap of business practices between uh, Japan and Bangladesh? Bangladesh is one of the friendliest country to Japan. Bangladesh people are very much uh, great friends for Japanese people. So I don't know whether there is any uh, big gap between us, uh, people of Japan, Japan and Bangladesh, and Japan and Bangladesh. Uh, but uh, yes, it's really important to uh, enhance the people-to-people -people contact. So through direct experience of meeting, talking, enjoying uh, each other's company, that would really help understand uh, each other. So if there's any uh, difference or perception gap between people, so I would say that uh, we really need to promote uh, people to people contact, co contact and cultural exchange, uh, promotion of cultural events on uh, both sides. So that is definitely something uh, uh, my government will consider and uh, plan and implement. Uh, as I said, uh, we are going to do have a very, very important two years for developing our relations next year to mark your 50th anniversary of the independence and 2022, uh, 50th year of diplomatic uh, relations. So those should provide uh, plenty of opportunity of uh, grassroots people to be exposed more uh, to the uh, culture of Japan and on the other, other, other side uh, the, to the Bangladesh culture. And for businessmen, I'm not really concerned about the lack of understanding on the part of Japanese businessmen because uh, those people are really experienced with businesses in very, very uh, different uh, uh, area, country, under very, very different circumstances in culture. So they can uh, adapt themselves uh, with the difference of culture, if anything, here in Bangladesh. But uh, with my brief experience of being here for uh, nine months, I don't really believe that uh, our culture is so or different, so apart. I think that's something uh, Rabindranath Tagore uh, wrote about in his memoir when he yeah. visited um, yeah. more than 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to, on a lighter note, uh, uh, there is a saying that Japanese companies, Japanese businessmen are very nice and polite, but they're losing to Chinese and Indian companies because of the lack of aggressiveness. Uh, I think uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, will have uh, different kind of emotional uh, connections with the Japanese uh, 
uh, uh, business. I, I, this is a question for Rupali Chaudhary particularly. We have been talking about, uh, for example, Honda uh, creating, investing here, uh, setting up their plants. Uh, basically, auto industry might attract uh, investment. But at the same time, uh, for example, an auto industry uh, needs on an Everest 30,000 parts. So uh, attracting ancillary sectors is also important. If if we think that Honda will invest and come, but if we don't really have the ancillary sectors, then it is not going to be sustainable. What is your take on that? I think, the, as I said, entrepreneurs are um, all the time creative and they find out, you know, it, the, all, the, all the manufacturing of a car or any industrial items for, say, for, for, for whatsoever is not going to come at one go. So they are going to bring in some parts from here. They are, they are going to, you know, manufacture some parts here. Maybe the engine itself, they are going to be still bringing from Japan or somewhere else. And that's the way actually industry evolves. So they will see that, you know, after two years, these people can manufacture, they can trust, and there is a, a amount of knowledge. And they also have the skilled um, and also right kind of, because in Bangladesh, uh, people are normally trainable, as uh, His Excellency said that they are also competitive. So, uh, and they also, learning agility is also there. So I think those people exactly know how to uh, educate and how, in what uh, uh, I think um, way they are going to invest in Bangladesh. So that is not a problem at all. All the 25 components or you know 30 components, they are not going to manufacture in one day. They are going to build the expertise and slowly they are going to come. And when they, I think I have a, I have a request to honorable um, uh, ambassador that basically his excellency, um, basically that in the Arai Hajar, we are expecting that, you know, four wheelers, uh, apart from the two wheelers, a car manufacturer will come to Bangladesh because, you know, the consumer durables, the refrigerator, you know, AC and all that, that, that has already been done by our local manufacturer, isn't it? So they are going to go high up in the, in the electronic goods. Uh, we are also looking at those kind of uh, things where they can manufacture here. The way they build actually Thailand also, the Suzuki, the whole plant was there in Thailand and they actually uh, expo uh, import back to Japan. So ultimately, that kind of formula also would like to be uh, followed here in Bangladesh. Uh, I know that, you know, Bangladesh, um, Japan has a lot of um, sympathy for Bangladesh, a lot of love for Bangladesh. And Bangladeshi consumers are also, they love Japanese product. They have blind faith in Japanese product. And they also have a ready-made ma market in Bangladesh. So taking everything put together, I, uh, I believe that, Japanese investment in Bangladesh will be feasible and it's going to be a win-win proposition for both the countries. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, basically at the end of our show. I'd like to uh, conclude uh, uh, with uh, uh, with words from uh, His Excellency Itao Naoki. Uh, back in 2011, uh, there are only uh, 100 Japanese companies in Bangladesh, uh, but the number has tripled in the last nine years. Uh, so the, it reflects on, on the interest Japanese investors are taking in Bangladesh. Uh, and um, you have uh, said that in uh, 2020, 2022, uh, we are going to uh, celebrate the 50th anniversary of uh, Japan Bangladesh relationship. What are your uh, um, aspirations uh, to take our relationship to the next level? That's a very uh, important question. And uh, I think uh, Japan needs to uh, win the respect and uh, trust among the Bangladesh uh, people, so uh, even towards the future. Building upon a successful partnership over the last 50 years, so this success was really uh, rock solid, and the people in Bangladesh say Japan is a tested uh, friend, 
trusted partner. Uh, but to build on this success, we really, really develop our partnership and uh, partnership of trust towards the future, uh, not only uh, economic relations, but also cultural relations and a very, very wide uh, range of areas, uh, political areas, people-to-people uh, -people contact, uh, maybe uh, required more. So I really want to uh, explore wider uh, possibilities of exchange of people and uh, uh, relationship. Uh, but uh, most important is really business relations uh, going on in full swing after uh, coronavirus uh, goes away. Uh, Rupali talked about the importance of uh, auto and motorbike industry. I think there are some Japanese uh, companies in the field which are ready to expand investment, but they really want to see the clear indication, good prospect that market will expand. Domestic market will expand for domestic production of brand new uh, cars and brand new uh, motorbikes. I think there is a room for a policy uh, improvement uh, to that end. But thank you uh, very much for having me. It's really wonderful to have this conversation with the panelists. But thank you very much. Th thank, thank you very you. much, Your Excellency. Thank you for joining us uh, and also for, uh, sharing your thoughts on the issues of uh, uh, Japan-Bangladesh relations. I thank uh, Rupali Choudhury uh, for taking the time out uh, and uh, uh, joining us. I thank um, Dr. Mahfuz Kabir for uh, his valuable input uh, to the issue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay well, stay strong, and a very good night to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. International Bangla TV, Shikriyashti.